Are we ready for the Northern Calypso? We're ready, Kevin. Hey, Mrs. Mickles, wait, will they feed me whipping? Daylight comes and I'm still damping. I go down pump and I drink ten pints. I think I'm getting plastered. And I go home and I beat me wife because I'm a big fat northern bastard. <laughs> well done, Kevin. <laughs> David Cameron, you might take our jobs, but you won't take our sense of humour. Too true, Sheldon. Half a mile beneath North Yorkshire's countryside, a rare breed of men are at work. Five strips, Rob, no accidents. All right. But not for much longer. <laughs> the last deep coal mine in Britain is about to close. Burying a once proud industry and terminating the job of every worker. We've got stacking shells, these lads. We need some hard graft. It's good for soil. In the final five weeks, they push themselves to the limit. Get on, we've got that's got a job stuff. It's not that I'm worried, I'm frustrated. Overcome breakdowns and kept cutting coal. These here are the best miners in the world. I really want everybody to get as much money as they can. But now the men will go their separate ways. See you later, Sean. <laughs> and start their lives all over again. It's a bit surreal, really, after so long working underground. That was 600 people when I applied. Five people got the job. Feels like there's no hope, it's draining now. Maybe I didn't spend enough time with kids when they're growing up. Bit more time for family. This is the story of the last miners. There's only so many times you can wash the windows, cut the grass, over the carpet. I've hoovered twice today before 12 o'clock. And on my sandwich, I've got ox tongue today. So who eats ox tongue? Everybody eats ox tongue. I save you a piece of taste. We're working down the pit, because it's a hot environment, if you take cheese, it melts. I've got a thing for monster lunches at the moment, I don't know why. I think I brought a um, uh, June butter for grandkids and then I got a taste for them. So how many times have you done this, do you think? Oh, God. Thousands and thousands and thousands. I won't be doing it much longer, will I? Sheldon has had the same routine for 38 years of his mining career. But this way of life is coming to an end. Over the years, it's paid for three houses, two weddings. Should we say I had a... Had a lovely life. It's about, well, that's not, no, that's not right. You shouldn't say that. It's not about to come to an end. It's just that the career in mining is about to come to an end. Britain is turning its back on the deep coal mining industry. And Kellingley Colliery in North Yorkshire is the last pit standing. Its 450 workforce are facing unemployment and an uncertain future beyond the pit. In just one week, Sheldon will no longer be a miner. The only place I've ever worked is in the mining industry. It's all I'm used to doing. You seem in good shape for it. I'm overweight. But today, he's got a job to do and a long commute. Descending over 800 metres beneath the surface, the miners board a train that travels a further four miles into the dark. It's such a weird sort of way to come to work, isn't it, this? It, it might be weird for you, Wes, but it's what 
we've been used to like having worked in pits for 33 years and uh, travelling on pad is, is just a way of life, isn't it? It's something what we're used to. We don't know any different. Jonesy and his men have shared this journey together for years. It's a working man I am, and I've been down underground. And I swear to God, if I never see the sun, all for me. Probably be a proud moment that we haven't worked in the last deep mine in Britain, but it'll be a sad moment as well. Tightening bond in the between all lads, it does get you a bit emotional at times. I've already got my wife and my daughter on, I mean, do I, do I need to get more tissues in house ready for when you finish? So I've got all that to come with in the dark recess of the mine, where you age before you die, and the cold dust lays heavy on your lungs. It's a working man I am, and I've been down. The miners at Kellingley Colliery have battled for the last 18 months to work the pit out of debt and secure their full redundancy pay. Well, the belt chair on beach is just starting up. Well done, everybody. For Kev, the miner's dedication has never been in doubt. You've got to one team. And you're up. Got a one team. We want team. After a series of breakdowns, mounting pressure on the workforce and time running out, finally the men of Kellingley are on track to complete the closure plan. It's incredible, incredible that the guys are working so hard to, to finish this plan. Last week was the best week's performance for over two years and that just shows you the true spirit and how committed they don't want to go out thinking that they've not achieved. Come on, you little beauty. <laughs> that right, isn't it, Jacko? That was fucking rowy. For Kev, completing the plan is a bittersweet moment. He now faces the reality of what life will be like outside the pit. We're all a bit anxious about finishing. It'd be harder for our generation. Us what 60 plus, won't it? I want to work. Still got a lot to offer to society and prospective employers. But we're already experiencing ageism with some of the companies. People with lots and lots of qualifications applying for jobs, not even getting through to interview stages. It's all about age. Middle of January, no job. Bags are packed, me and Wellard are out on the street. Sheldon will be swinging from rafters. Come on, Sean, I'm only kidding. I'm under no pressure at all to do anything at home. June's never said I've got to get a job or she wants I should do this or I should do that. It's my life, I live it. No, she's the not way. said it, but <laughs> next not. Friday there'll probably be a solicitor's letter come stating that you'll get a job. Most of us are scared, scared of what's out there. My skills in transferring them out there in the uh, big wide world and how I'm going to be taken, how I'm going to be perceived. Because it is you know, a whole different world working in a coal mine. So it's, it's scary. It's not just the older miners who are concerned about future employment. Jack is just 23 and lives at home with his mum. So Jack, what's for dinner? It's chilly. It's chilly today. I'm impressed, Jack. Nice seeing you cook. Oh, I always do. I love it. I think he got fed up of my bland cooking. Yeah. Jack knows to find a job, he has to leave home. But with his mother recently diagnosed with cancer, it's a tough decision to leave his family. With pit closing and me falling ill, it's just um, unfortunate, really. But he's got to move on, hasn't he? So met most of um, an awful situation. I go back in January for um, another endoscopy to see how the tumours have grown. And if they've grown to the size where they have to come out, my stomach's 
going to be removed. It's a, it's a rare cancer. Fingers crossed. Um, once the stomach's out, the, you know, they don't appear anywhere else, but you never know. You never know. With your mum saying she's not well, does it make it even harder for you to, to think about leaving when your mum's not...? Yeah. Well, no, I can't. Just give me a minute. It has been hard, as that. Um, I know um, he don't like talking about me being ill. Everything's just come at the wrong time. He'll be fine. He will. And I'll be back. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. You OK? Yeah. So, mate, I know it's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. It's hard to talk about. Jack, so if the pit wasn't closing, would you move? No. No, no, the work's here forever, for me. We've prayed and prayed that, you know, they're going to come and save it, but it's not going to happen now. Tomorrow, Kellingly Colliery will close. But today, it's business as usual. Before they go down the mine, Jonesy's calling management to find out if his men will work underground on the last day. It will be their final shift together. Are we cutting tomorrow on his last shift? Turn up for work as normal tomorrow, lads, that's it. It'd be nice to know at this stage, will we be cutting? And all he keeps saying is, turn up for work as normal. They've been <laughs> for the last 30 odd years. We're not going to start being right with them last week. <laughs> When, when, you, when you think about it, probably it is you start thinking about pit shutting and uh, all your work, workmates who you're not going to see again. And, um, but you try to put that to the back of your mind, don't you, for the time being, and uh, just get on with what we've got to do. The main thing what we've got to do over these next two days is make sure we don't hurt nobody. And that's the main thing. I think probably tomorrow we'll come and there'll yeah. just be a great big party for us, a free bar and everything. Yeah. 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 And a great brown and You are. Even though Sheldon says he's going to delete all us and all that off his all his social media and his mobile and that, he'll he'll be he'll be texting us and saying, are we, are we meeting up for a drink and that? I, I'm sure I'll be saying, funeral face who? Yeah. Jonesy who? Never heard of it. One of the oldest miners at Kellingley is Ray. He recently suffered a heart attack at the pit and has been off work since. Today, the men have gathered to give Ray a proper send-off. Gathered here today, it's a second to last shift, penultimate shift. And I've asked Ray to come, because uh, all lads between us, you know, everybody loves him at this pit. It showed last week when you all come out at pit and Made a fuss of him, didn't you know what I mean, when he's had his heart trouble, right? Are you getting emotional, Dave? Yeah, yeah, I'm a bit, yeah. Bad <laughs> 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 man, a lot of years, Ray. He's been a great ball, can he? Put a, a lot of effort into this pit. Yeah. And this is what we've had made for him. Yeah. What it is, uh... <laughs> <laughs> This moment marks the end of his 47-year mining career and he will miss out on the last shift tomorrow. Come on, man.
The closure of Kellingley Colliery has caught the attention of the national press. They're here to witness the end of deep coal mining in the UK. You're going to be like weird celebrities today. Oh, we'll soon be forgotten. They've shut loads of pits up to now and nobody's been bothered. Well, nobody, hardly anybody about who wants to keep it, keep it off. They're not bothered, were they? No, I might <laughs> Away from the press, assistant manager Pete clocks on for the last time. It's the end of his 32 year career. I feel sad that this day's come, but I feel happy that we've hit the plan. So when you look at emotions, how do you put happiness and sadness together? It's very difficult. By the end of today, I will be sad that, um, that we've come to an end. I'll be sad that I don't see a lot of these people again other than socialising. <laughs> It's been decided the day shift will be the last miners to cook coal at Kellingley. It's a big thing for them being the last shift to cut the face, but it's also going to be the last cut for Kellingley, but it's also going to be the last cut for the last deep mine in the UK. This historic moment is something Jonesy, Kev and Sheldon will miss. They aren't due to clock on until this evening. I don't understand exactly how this happens, why it is not possible just to keep the mine alive. It is a shame that we couldn't have the same level of interest when we were trying to keep the mines open as the same level of interest as now the mines are closing. Fucking me, you just run big clowns over at fucking road. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's a bit nippy. You're all right. That'll be all right. Yeah. All right, you're northern. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Don't mind the publicity because they're fantastic lads, but um, I think the publicity is for the wrong reason. We should have been fighting to keep the pits open rather than celebrating the pit shutting. Pitmen are not shy. Whenever there's a camera available, they do try their best to get on it. So <laughs> they're certainly not shy. Hello. Jack's taking the opportunity to say goodbye to his workmates. The men who have trained him from his first day are his last stop. When I first got here, Jack was just coming out his time as apprentice. You know, so he was a, a good lad. I mean, he's only a young whippersnapper at the minute, isn't he? Yeah, he's only a greenhorn. So he's, he's, he's nearly a clean piece of paper for an employer to work with him. And, he, and, and he's like a sponge, Jack. Sometimes he needs ringing out, though, because he does take some shit on board and all. But... <laughs> as soon as he gets up there, Geordie's will look after him. I've looked after him. I've 
all these years, so <laughs> and we shall right. continue doing it. Don't aim too low. No, no. So you yeah. don't underestimate what you do know. So mm -hmm. your uh, positive traits, mate. Your commitment, experience. Mm. In a very arduous industry. Uh, yeah. Two hundred odd thousand when me and him joined, and we're now at last of the last. It's the best job I've ever had. It says. Well, so that's that. Never mind. Crazy, isn't it? Mm. The day shift had been cutting up the coal face for four hours. Shearer's coming to you now, he's 20 jobs away. The end is here. The end is here. And for their manager, Bonner, it's sinking in that this will be the last chance to work alongside his men. Never experience it, will you? In any other industry, never, never ever. They've got a bond what can't be broken. Honestly, it's unbelievable. Talking to you now, I'm holding tears back. I've a lump in my throat as big as my fist. I'm, it's getting harder and harder to bottle it all in at the moment. When we go out, my for last time, um, just crack up, man. So you got me going now. As the shearer powers down, centuries of deep coal mining come to an end. That one there. See that one there? Oh, boys. See it, well, back coal. That is the last piece of coal mined in, in the British coal fields. The last coal field we've got for killing the coal. What happens to all this stuff on the ground? Just leaving it. Just getting left. They'll just turn the power off. They'll, they'll sail, sail shafts up and that'll be it. Millions, millions of pounds of equipment just, just left. It's easier to describe it as a family. You're all one. You help each other. They'll give you anything. They'll do anything for each other. They have the little tips and fall out. It's a, it's a family. It is really a family. Everything you experience at home, you'll experience with these men here. I'm very fortunate to have to be the last ship. I'm, I'm really glad it's my men. Numb. Numb is the only words I've got. Uh, desperately sad to have something so important taken away from you. It's, uh, it's been an emotional shift, that's all I can say. Oh, Mate, yeah, last whistle. That's it. That's it. Done and dusted.
Today we witnessed the last miners to come out of the last shift at this, the last deep coal mining pit in the country. It's also a sobering thought that we will never see these miners again. This is it. This is the end of the industry. Lads, now, how do you feel? Sad. But Never we'll get on with it. We're giving the full story at 6.30. I'm looking off tonight. Can we have a bit more? Yeah, we'll, we'll do it again. So exactly the same, but a real intelligence. How do you all feel collectively? Yeah. Just sum it up in one word. Yeah, yeah. Devastated. Right, Dizzy, do you want to go for devastated? Yeah. 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 We'll yeah. say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right, OK. Right. And this is the miners who've done the last ship. How are you feeling, lads? Yeah. We'll have the full story of North at 6.30 tonight. Perfect, right. Oh, yeah. 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 It's not just the men underground who will lose their jobs today. In the boardroom, colliery manager Sean has already begun saying his goodbyes. First of all, I'd like to say thanks, you know, for supporting me. And as a team, we've all worked together. We've all believed in each other. We've had a fallout, you know, but like miners do, we have a fallout. And then we get back on us. But unfortunately, guys, you know, we've come to End It Road. And, um, you know, I'd like to thank everybody. We can all have a sandwich together. Right, duck in, lads, let's get uh, wrappings off. Yeah. So we're all in the same boat, really, whether you're management or, or mine worker. It's still the end of uh, deep mining, it's still the end of all our careers. I thought today the, the underground bit is for the lads themselves, so I'll leave them to it. I'm not very good at the soft skills, as they say. <laughs> the commotion of the day is over, and the last piece of coal has been cut. But, as instructed by management, Sheldon and his workmates arrive for their shift. Hey, right, boys. Hey, Sheldon. Hey, Sheldon. What's the story, lads? The doctor told me. Swipe on. I've got everybody. And I've got to get it with the store. So he gets last day's pay. Just wait. Wait till we're told that we're not required, then we'll all shake hands and go. We'll get Sheldon. We were cutting, and we were last shift cutting, yeah. We want to go down and. That's how you treat it. Sad enough as it is. No, bad enough as it is. Says it all, doesn't it? That could be a pile of workers on scrap heap. What's going on? It's the end. We're here. They're going through uh, the procedure, uh, closing everything down, uh, afternoon shift. Um, as soon as deputy manager who's in control gets confirmed that everything's being done what he wants doing, he's going to let everybody go home. It doesn't really feel like a proper end to about 40 year career doing this job. What did you think had happened? A gold watch engraved. Somebody waiting in concourse from management. Check your hand. It's done, isn't it? We can't keep saying, well, we'll go down tomorrow, we'll go down tomorrow. There's got to be a final point, isn't there, sometimes? It'd have been nice of them to be able to tell us last night this is your last call in shift. And it'd have meant a lot more to us, I think, because we'd all been there in his own environment. So yeah, tira, definitely. Wouldn't it? It'd have yeah. been a lot better. Even if it were, we had to do it tonight, yeah. it'd have been a lot better for us. Just to get to get through shift, not get hurt, all go meet up at train, check hands, and it'd have been a lot better that way. It'd have, it'd, it'd have been right, wouldn't it? But this is we're gonna be in and out, in and out, and it's just like put a bit of a damn squib on it. You know all all the times I've said it. Yeah, now we're gonna finally do it. <laughs> There's a bag. Get your fucking oh, lock on. Get your lock on. There you go. I've had that years ago. 
One of Pete's final tasks before he clocks off is to terminate the underground air supply. The first set we, we know has stopped, but we just need to make sure that the air doors are, the, are in the correct position and then uh, very shortly we'll be stopping the last of the booster fans underground, Just This is the end of Kellingley and it's the end of coal mining. That's, that's the thing what, uh, what sort of um, is a bit choking. We've just put coffin lid on and every one of us in here is putting a nail in it. What we're doing now is the end. It is. I'm 100% convinced, going forward, Britain will regret the day that they've closed their coal mines. But God forbid, if we have three or four months of a real harsh winter, uh, Britain would be struggling to, uh, to power. You just cannot replace quickly the capacity of not only closing the coal mines, but now closing all the coal-fired power stations again. The country's not ready to, to take up this um, this gap in the energy market. At the age of 16 years, with my father close to tears, when he swore to God never to send his son To the dark recess of the mine Where you ways before your time And the coal dust lies heavy on your lungs At the age of 55 I thank God I'm still alive When the wheel above the hole no longer turns And they finally close the hole Where we clawed for years for coal Never again will I go down underground. Thank you. Bravo. Bravo. It's Mr. Wordsworth. Hello. Uh, just, just tell them we're, we're off down pit cutting. See what they say. Yeah. Right, lads, get changed. He's changed his mind. We cut him. <laughs> right, tell them they can go. OK, thank you. Right. Yeah, they can go. They're happy with you, but everything they've done for closed down, so he's letting them all go. <laughs> Right, they punch a lot. 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 Right, they punch a lot.
See you tomorrow. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Dude, a fantastic bunch of lads what we've got on our shift, haven't we? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, we've uh, we've been together a few years, we, haven't we? Mm. Well, got through thick and thin. Well, it's good times and it's bad times. While the Kellingley miners face an uncertain future outside the pit, at this time of year, some things never change. Merry Christmas, baby. Is that recording? Sure I can't see, see me. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So what's this then, Dad? Stuffing. Caramelised stuffing. Caramelised white birds. Christmas stuffing. Oh, you pulled his head off. Bought me a diamond ring for Christmas. Kev, it's been a pleasure, a privilege and an honour to have had the opportunity to work with you and to become your friend. Never will I go underground again. Well done, Ross. Oh. Whoa, that's a big meal for a little boy. It's 2016 now. Here we are, onwards and upwards. Things that warm is melted chocolate. <laughs> Look forward to the new opportunities that's uh, rising for me, and uh, let's get on with it. Today's gonna be a good night. Night's gonna be a good night. Night's gonna be a good night. <laughs> hey. Monday the year 2016, the mood, ah, oh, fantastic, optimistic, full of vim and vigour, hope you had a brilliant Christmas, fabulous, sparkling, dazzling, good fun. Smells nice? Diesel. Only the brakes. I wonder how many people are getting up this morning and doing this. It's a new year for Sheldon. After years of security in the same job, he's now one of Britain's 1.7 million unemployed. I don't, I don't want a new start. This isn't what I want. I'm not being all, in, I'm not being all enthusiastic about ending my mining career because I'm not. This is not what I wanted. But it's what I've got, so it's what I've got to do. It's what I've got to get on with. I always thought I'm, I'd retire a miner, to be quite frank. At the age of 54, he's going back to school. The course that we're starting this morning is a copper cable and fibre optic jointing course. As much as I don't want to let go of the past, and, and it's something new. It's, it's, it's a new door opening. It's a new, a, a new career, hopefully, and a, a, new, you know, a new start in life. I've got a puncture, I think. I'm gonna have to pull over or I'm gonna knock a tire. You wouldn't believe it. Brand new tire. Three or four weeks ago. You watch how fast I can change this. You wouldn't believe this very first day. It's not an omen, is this? Is it? What a thing to ask me. Let's roll, mate. You don't fucking believe this.
It's not a bad mobile, this, is it? Jack has lived with his family all his life, but now he has to leave home to find a new career. Here, look, give that to Uncle Jack for his new house. Give it to Uncle Jack. Yeah, there's a kiss. Give kisses. No. That's oh. not right, <laughs> <laughs> This is my hand, my hand will do. A thousand loving things for you, and you will remember when I am tall. That once my hand was just this small. Oh. Bless it. Kiss, yes. Give Uncle Jack a kiss. Oh, no. Give me a kiss. Say bye. Say bye-bye. Right, have a safe journey. Right, see you later on. See you later, love. Wish me luck. <laughs> see you later. We could have done without me being ill, which has just added blessing to it, you know, to his worry. It's gone now. It's gone. I just wish he were at home, cos I think I need him at home, minute. But as a mum, you can't stop him. You know, you've got to try and be brave and, you know, not put how I feel on him. We're seven minutes late. The fact that I'm late on my very first day, I'm mortified. Unbelievable. Sheldon finally makes it to his fibre optic course. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year, you won't believe it. What's up with it? You want to see it stated? Okay. Back at class, back at class. Okay. No, I okay. thought I'd copy enough of you. All right, guys, just sit down wherever you want. <laughs> Sheldon's not the only miner from Kellingley on the course. He's training alongside some of his old workmates, all of them trying to get into a new industry. That's a fibre optic fibre. There's enough fibre within this to probably do Sheffield. Cordless power tools are recommended for use where the environment is. Noisy. No, wet. Wet, wet. yeah. Wet, that's right, yeah. 15, please. A safety sign which warns of a hazard has a background coloured A, red. No. Oh. Yellow. Yellow. Red, remember, is don't do something with it. Right, yeah. and blue's mandatory, yeah. yeah. Question three, please, Tony. If the earth connection to the metal case or electrical appliances is unplugged. It's been a long day in the classroom, and now Sheldon has homework. If a 60 watt lamp is left switched on for five minutes, the energy used is. Don't you know? <laughs> it's 18,000 joules, actually. So, Sean, when he told you you've got to learn all these things, did it make you have second thoughts that you should be getting into a new industry? No, not at all. Just because Kelly the Colour is shut and gone and it's history. All the people that work there aren't. I don't want to grow old. And I'm not ready to sit down and be old and not do anything. It's very, very important for me to get back to work, get back into it, get back in uh, into a career. It's a fresh start for Jonesy. He has a new job and a new uniform. This looks how it's going to be now. You look very smart, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I brush up well, don't I? Keep looking at time. Don't want to be late, do we, Wes? See ya. Have a good day. Hello. <laughs> Thank you.
Jonesy's new job is for a prestigious car dealership. Having spent the last 10 years in management, he's having to start again. What? Hey. Hey. This Hi, is our uh, hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. She's going to go through understanding the A class and the C class with you. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to leave you in Charlotte's cable lounge. So should we uh, take you over to the A class and we'll yeah. have, a, have, have a little look around it? The main thing for me is show the main controls. Um, so your gearbox, which on an automatic is on the steering wheel here, and then your handbrake, Something enough it's not down there. Um, it's down there, can you just see? I mean, if there is anything that you're not sure of, it's not the end of the world if there's something that you can't answer then and there. Um, but, I do, but I do want some of them manuals to take home to read. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, yeah I, can, I, can give you, I can give you one on each model. Once you've learned one, you'll jump into the next car and you'll, 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 you'll be nice uh, driving them up and down, won't it? It'd be different from riding uh, about four or five mile into bowels of Kellingly Colliery on a little paddy train like I've done with you, Wesley. It's a bit surreal, really, after so long working underground and that in a, in a like, male-dominated environment, um, to be coming to work at a place like Mercedes-Benz for JCT 600, it's unbelievable. Is this the new you, then? This is the new me, Wesley. Onwards and upwards. The same for me, boys. I have a bag of them as well. Jack has moved further north and is living with his girlfriend. So far, he's been unable to find work. There's not much up here, but it's the same for steel lads as well, you know, they're just the same boat as I am. It's just competing, I think. I feel like you're competing for a job in my own mind. That's maybe why I'm not airing out back. Not a thing on jobs in this paper today. What kind of job do you want? Well, something like before, you know, just engineering, mechanical maintenance, you know. Whatever applied for comes up with a service engineer's job, which I applied for this morning, mechanical. But I've done this plenty of times, you apply and hear nothing. It's just demoralising for me. I enjoy working, I enjoy giving some, you know, give and get back. I, get, I, I like to earn my own money, I like to be a bit independent. It feels like there's no hope, it's draining now. I thought, give it a month, I should be all right. And I'm here, jelly frogs, chocolate orange and papers on my phone, just trying to find a job. I thought life was meant to get easier when it first was. It's been more hectic than ever, doing jobs what I've got put off and put off and put off and now get an opportunity. After 37 years of mining, Kev is taking some time out to consider what he should do next. I have applied for several jobs. I will retrain, but I do know whatever I do, whatever I end up doing, the hours and the way it takes over your life, it won't happen again, it can't. You know, there is other things in life. Too late for me now, but you don't spend enough time with your mum, you don't spend enough time with your dad, you don't spend enough time with your grandparents. Maybe I didn't spend enough time with kids when they're growing up. Hopefully they both still love me and think I've tried my best for them, I always provided for them, I still do. When they ring up, I'll answer the phone and they'll say, is my mum there? They always naturally go to the mum. Probably because I'm a morning old scroll like, and she's daft to him, but they always ask for the man. <laughs> Come on, man. Good girl. Good girl. Come on. Jack still hasn't given up on his search for work away from home and his mother is never far from his thoughts. Speak every day near enough, so, you know, it's not... Look, like I'm not hearing from her, we've lost contact. What's she doing all right? She had another endoscopy and a colonoscopy, and it's come back promising, actually, but there's less tumours than what we originally were, so uh, it's promising as such now. I suppose I just worry like anybody normally would when we've got a poor mum, you know. The world's laziest dog. She's actually nodding off. 
gone from hundreds and hundreds of miners to a creature who just, just doesn't want to walk at all, who falls asleep, stood up. Mm -hmm. so, you're tired. You're tired. I still miss him. I don't miss the mess and I don't miss his washing, but yeah, I miss him. I suppose it's always hard your child leaving home for the first time um, as a mum and when you've been so close, but then you just get on with it. Oh, come on. Patience, that's what it is. It's a new year, new start, so keep plodding on. You just take every day as it comes, so I'm all right. Yeah, I'm fine. Come on, mate. I hope he does find a job up there because, like I say, there's nothing around here for anybody now. So, yeah, he's better off up there. I think there's more chance. Are you sure it's even? Do you want to reach and do it? No, you're all right. I'll just I'll supervise. Shoot your face then. <laughs> Kev has been spending more time with his family. Today, he's hard at work renovating his son's home. Um, we've had him wallpapering, fixing walls, boxing in, bit of gardening, and now this. I think now that he's got more time on his hands to do a job, whereas before it was just on, like, weekends or, you know, weeks off that he'd be able to do things, like, when I've had my days off and my dad's been here, I've been able to do jobs with him, so that's been good. At 26, I've got a different dad that's doing more and is out and about more and is um, enjoying his life, so... Yeah, not that I've got my dad back, I've got a different dad now. So your time was, was swallowed up mining. I'd, I'd have loved to have carried on, I'd have loved to carry but I'd have probably done it till I, till I dropped. You know, we used to do the tape of life at work. If you start at 70, I've got that left. Grandad died at 71, worry. Well, I'm glad you're being cheerful. Yeah. So I've got that left. If I live to 70, that's what you've got left, 15 years. I think maybe we stretch you a few more years. We might be all right, yeah? Hopefully. <laughs> Hey, Robert. Um, Russ Jones, Mercedes-Benz. Jones has got used to his life above ground. And in his new career, he's become an expert. When you've got your foot on your, on your brake, when you shove it in, you'll feel it take your foot away. Here you've got your heated seats. Cool, isn't it? <laughs> That's it. I hope you enjoy your Probably. new car. Sure, I will. Thank yeah. you very much. All right. <laughs> Rust Jones from Mercedes Benz. It's not Rust Jones from Big K. Yeah, <laughs> oh dear. What a life. Sheldon has successfully completed his fibre optic training, but it hasn't guaranteed him employment. My blue tits are back. I like in my life. Two bloody blue tits in my box. Need to chill out. Today, he's waiting to hear if all his hard work will land him a job. What do I think's gonna happen? You had a great interview, you had a fantastic way, everything you've done, can't fault you, but unfortunately, there's nothing available at this moment in time. I've got friends that just fall in cow shit and come out smelling the roses, and it just never, ever happens to me. You know, I am, in a way, a, a kind of a... The cup's half empty guy, and I wish I wasn't. Why am I stood staring at the phone? Fuck the phone. Not to bin it. Look, mate, eh? What? It gets pretty tedious and boring when it used to going to work. It's how you fill your day, it's just how um, you become numb. There's so many, so many times you can wash the windows, cut the grass, over the carpet. 
I've Ubered twice today before 12 o'clock. Hello. It is, yes. Never. Wow. Fantastic. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank Cheers, bye. Well, I am a telecoms engineer for Limbrook on the rail division. I, I, I honestly thought I won't get anything. I, I didn't think I'd get. I did not. I don't know why. Just I didn't think I would. It's me. I've got a job. Uh, with them as a telecoms engineer at railways. Well done, mate. <sighs> You're no longer a miner. You're a no, telecoms no, engineer. No, I'm not. No. I'll always be a miner. You'll never take the coal dust out of my lungs. As long as I live, I'll always be a coal miner. That's now a telecoms engineer. <laughs>